This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description or my code PREZ will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video discussing urban planning topics in city skylines. Today we're going to be discussing freeways. We're going to be discussing the problems with urban freeways specifically, and some ways that in certain circumstances we might be able to either make these problems better or just remove the freeways entirely. We're never going to be able to undo the damage that decades of freeway construction inflicted on our cities, but we can try and now's the time to start. So let's start thinking about how we might fix our cities. So first, let's look at the consequences of urban freeways in our cities. First, urban freeways create a sort of border vacuum effect. Jane Jacobs discusses this extensively. She discusses how long continuous uses that are maybe coarse grained that disrupt the fine grained well connected nature of streets as they've already been built can create massive issues for cities. Specifically, she uses some examples like railway tracks and large campuses like hospital and college campuses, even parks, and, and the borders of these things, whether they're you know, a railway or an expressway or, or a uh, large college campus, they create vacuums. They suck the life out of the surrounding areas because they seem impenetrable and they disrupt the connectivity of the areas, the street networks around them. And this is in comparison to the fine-grained, well-connected street networks with diverse land uses that we come to expect in some of our central cities in America that were built around streetcar suburbs, for example. Urban freeways massively disrupt these street patterns, and even though you could say that Oh, well, you could technically walk under the freeway or, you know, uh, ride your bike under the freeway. It is such a uninviting place to human beings that the connectivity of is, it, between places is just destroyed by the border vacuum of the freeway. Some consequences of this include uh, streets becoming less safe because there are fewer people who have eyes on the street, as Jacobs would say. It makes areas less economically and visually diverse. Uh, you get large uses around freeways, like self-storage centers, um, warehouse uses, for example. It just basically sucks the life out of these areas. And Jane Jacobs specifically names expressways as an example of a border vacuum that simply cannot be solved without fundamental change. Freeways are just so uninviting and hostile to humans that they create barriers between places that not only make it hard to cross from one district in a city to another, but also suck the life out of all of the areas around them. Beyond border vacuums, though, freeways also create noise and air pollution. Particularly air pollution, we've come to understand, is incredibly consequential. Some impacts of living near major sources of air pollution like freeways include reduced lung function, asthma, cardiovascular disease, and premature death. And in fact, according to a study by MIT, 200,000 Americans die early because of air pollution every single year, which is significant. That is a significant amount of people who die every year because of air pollution in the United States, and freeways tend to be massively concentrated in poor minority neighborhoods uh, that they were plowed through in the first place. So the impacts of air pollution are not distributed equally. And on that point, let's explore how freeways were very specifically built through poor and minority neighborhoods that had no voice in the political process. I really recommend checking out the Segregation by Design website. They have a lot of visualizations that'll really illustrate how planners and policymakers segregated our cities more than they had already been segregated, using infrastructure and using policy. And urban freeways are one of the main tools that 20th century planners used to destroy or otherwise segregate black and other minority neighborhoods in the United States. So beyond addressing just basic livability for everybody, we need to address this history. We need to address how freeways were built in a way that was actively racist and segregationist. And in the past, freeways were built in a top-down way that ran completely contrary to the needs of local communities. So we need to make sure that the processes we use to undo that history are guided by the communities themselves and allow for those communities to finally have self-determination. So let's take a look at how some cities across America are trying to undo this history and actually build people-centered places, either removing or 
reshaping freeways to put people first. Setting the scene though, we're in a situation where our cities in the United States at least are completely planned around cars, so it remains politically and sometimes practically impossible to remove freeways entirely, but we do need to be cautious because a lot of people will make that argument about literally any segment of freeway no matter how dense the urban environment is. Some segments of freeway may be more politically possible to remove, for example the 980 in Oakland is actually, uh, th there's a massive conversation about removing it right now and it looks like that will happen in the coming decades. On the other hand, the 880 freeway in downtown Oakland is much less likely to be removed in the medium term because it is deemed to be a lot more essential by a lot more people, and to an extent this is justified. The 880 is a much more important freight corridor, and it moves a lot more people than the 980. And thus, there are going to be different solutions for both freeways. We need to solve connectivity problems, um, but different political circumstances make different solutions necessary. Before we get to these solutions, I want to introduce today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for anyone who wants to learn about graphic design, illustration, photography, really any skill that you might want to learn. You can find a class for it on Skillshare that'll teach you all you need to know. My favorite thing about Skillshare is that rather than going through assorted videos and articles on YouTube and Google, you're given curated and high quality classes that allow you to skip the step of sifting through the garbage and actually get to high quality instructional content and actually learn the skill you want to learn. If you're anything like me, you might find that your tasks and priorities can become scattered across a lot of different places and it makes you stressed out. That's why I took Thomas Frank's class called Mastering Productivity. It's just an all-in-one class showing you how to create a customized productivity system that actually suits your needs and how to iterate upon it to actually make it suit you. You can spend hundreds of hours on YouTube looking for the best productivity tips and tools to use, but that's just a waste of time. This class by Thomas Frank on Skillshare gives you all you need to create your own system and make it work. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description or code PREZ will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So let's go over some ways to fix freeways without completely removing them. First, one thing you could do is you could uh, dig a tunnel under the existing freeway and put that freeway in the tunnel and then turn the top area where you remove the freeway from on the ground into a boulevard or a park. One example of this is the Big Dig in Boston. The only problem with this solution is that it's really expensive. Another example of this happening recently is in Seattle, where the Alaskan Way Viaduct wasn't just replaced with a boulevard. Planners also felt the need to build a freeway under downtown in a tunnel that massively increased the cost of the project as well. And there's a really great argument to be made that both in Seattle and even in Boston, the cities could have lived without those freeways going under their downtowns. They could have just built boulevards and called it that, massively decreasing the cost of both projects. And my point here is that the billions and billions of dollars spent on this kind of tunnel project is the kind of money that could turn a city into a cycling paradise overnight. So we do need to think about the opportunity cost of building a tunnel in place of a freeway. It's pretty massive and it could remove the entire justification for needing that automobility within the city center to begin with. An alternative to really expensive tunneling could be building a lid or a cap over your freeway, which requires some engineering, but it's very doable. Seattle's done it in multiple places, and it's great. I mean, Freeway Park in downtown is in one of those locations where removing a freeway entirely would be very difficult because there isn't any alternative to the I-5 freeway in downtown Seattle. As a result, the city has capped a segment of it, and there are proposals to cap even more of the, the I-5 freeway in downtown Seattle. Now, Seattle also capped part of the freeway on Mercer Island, and it's a park now rather than a gap between one side of the island and the other. Other. Taking some inspiration from Seattle, I had Mr. Chaco build a freeway lid over the equivalent of the I-5 freeway in my City Skyline series inspired by Seattle, Columbia City. If you want to learn more about freeway caps or lids or whatever you want to call them, I'll leave a video by City Nerd in the description. But considering the transportation environment, the political environment we're in, we really need to be considering freeway caps or lids or once again, whatever you want to call them. They don't require removing freeways, but they do allow you to restore connectivity between places that were previously disconnected. 
So now let's talk about a couple things you could do when you remove freeways entirely. First, you could just build housing, and this might be the best at reducing that border vacuum effect between places. It creates connectivity between one place and another that was previously disconnected by a freeway. Rochester's doing this right now. They're building housing on top of an a previous urban freeway that has been removed and it's a beautiful thing and these homes are wonderful and they restore connectivity between places that have been disconnected for decades but um, maybe there's an alternative in building green space which is a another option which is making the space into a greenway or a park an awesome example of this is harbor drive in portland oregon the portland waterfront used to have a freeway on it, it was terrible i'll link a video in the description talking about the whole history of this but yeah portland removed its waterfront freeway a long time ago and rather than replacing it with tons and tons of car lanes on the ground instead um, in some sort of boulevard reconfiguration it just turned it into a park and it is beautiful the cherry blossoms are blooming there right now it's one of portland's great public spaces and i had the privilege of visiting it for the first time a couple months ago another example of how you can turn a freeway into a park is phoenix park in my city skyline city cabrillo it's part of a freeway, an elevated freeway, that was going to be built across South Cabrillo, but community organizers managed to block the freeway with a lawsuit halfway through its construction, and part of the segment that had already been constructed was turned into a park overlooking the city. Now we're going to talk about one of the more popular options for replacing a freeway, which is just to put a boulevard where the freeway used to be. Now you have to be careful not to build a boulevard that's even more of a border vacuum than the existing freeway, because sometimes planners will just build massive eight-lane boulevards that are auto-centric where there used to be a freeway. We can't do that, but we can build boulevards that put people first, put transit riders first, put cyclists first. San Francisco's done this in the Embarcadero where the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake destroyed, you know, basically caused the collapse of the Embarcadero Freeway. It used to be a freeway on the San Francisco waterfront, but there was no political will to replace it when it was destroyed. San Franciscans hated it, and it was removed and replaced with a beautiful boulevard that's one of San Francisco's most beautiful public spaces. San Francisco also previously replaced a freeway in the center of the city, or at least a segment of it, with a boulevard, Octavia Boulevard, which ends in a nice car-free park that's nice and human-scaled. It's beautiful. This is the kind of thing we can do when we just decide that freeways don't belong in our cities. Hopefully this video's given you some hope, maybe some inspiration on what your city can do to move past the freeway. Let me know in the comments uh, where you live and w what freeway segment you'd like to see removed or capped or whatever the solution you think is best would be. And you know, let's have a conversation about what solutions work in different places. We're never gonna be able to undo the damage caused by freeways, but we can try to make it better. So let's get started with that rather than kicking the can down the road for decades and decades. Thanks so much for watching this far. If you watched this far, maybe you could give the video a like. That'd be much appreciated. Subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Uh, if you want to download the Cabrillo save game, the city you saw in this video, uh, head over to my Patreon at the link in the description. You get a bunch of benefits over there, like early access to new videos. And I do want to shout out some patrons quickly. Uh, Tividar Pinter, I definitely butchered that. Uh, Ron Shawner, Robert Weber, Jade Schuyler, Descent X, and Carlos Rodriguez. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. You even as I've been a little less frequent with my uploads, it's been both a function of lack of time, but also just trying to make these videos special, doing what I want on this channel, and all the support of my Patreon supporters is, and YouTube members as well is what, um, what makes that possible, and I really appreciate all your support. Anyway, uh, if you want to download the save game, get early access to videos, you can do that over on my Patreon. Um, but that's about it. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.